have a feeling I think we're gonna go look at a beautiful sailing yacht. Wow! Yeah, this is it. This is the old system, the hybrid system. Uh, when you remove the big diesel engine. Yeah. So also when you're sailing, you, you can hear the propeller rotating, which is actually quite funny. A generator, but it acts like, a, like an engine. So, good morning. Welcome to a new vlog. It's a surprise for Rianne. It's a bucket list item and it's going to be in the north of the Netherlands on a place called Makkum. And what we're going to do is we're going to visit a classic sailing yacht, the 56 Truly Classic. And they are converting it into a complete electric sailing yacht. And it's done by two young uh, entrepreneurs and brothers called Berend and Anthony. And uh, yeah, really looking forward. So, where are we going? It's a surprise. <laughs> Can't tell you. Okay. Bye bye. Bye bye. <laughs> Say bye bye, bye bye, Oma. Bye bye, Oma. Wow. Yeah. I can tell you the following. We are going to the north. Yeah. And. It has something to do with a bucket list item. Cool. So, here we go. Cool. I think we're going to go look at a beautiful sailing Yonder. yacht, so that's going to be very exciting. I think we're going to look at one of my favorite sailing yachts, classic sailing yachts. And yeah, I think <laughs> they, these guys have something with stock electric, so maybe it's... <laughs> <laughs> There's something Ma in the back. Yeah, yeah, maybe it's one of my bucket list things, so... Okay. Yeah, yeah, if, if you turn around, you probably know what it is. So. Yeah. <laughs> if you turn around. Yeah, we <laughs> Ah! Uh, <laughs> Very cool, yes! Come on, let's go inside! Welcome! This is where it all happens! Yeah. Wow, what a beauty! So, uh, wow. nice to have you here! Yes! And uh, we, sh we will show you what you are doing currently. What a beauty, what a yeah. beautiful sailing boat! This is, we, we met a family in the, in the Mediterranean, in Croatia, yeah. and they were sailing a truly classic as well. Yeah. And then we said, is this going to be our new sailing boat? <laughs> yes. And now you are converting this one in yeah. a completely electric yes. or hybrid. Yeah, hybrid, exactly. Yeah. Hybrid. Wow, but it's a truly classic, right? Yeah, yes, the truly classic from Hook. It's a 20 year old uh, ship. So it's here now for a refit from the hutting. We have refinished uh, the wood. Okay. And uh, we are converting it in a hybrid system. Wow. Well, looking forward to look inside what you yeah. guys yeah. have been doing. And, uh, Let's go. Yeah. Yeah. Let's go. Let's go. Wow. Yeah, this is it. This is the whole system, the hybrid system. Uh, this is everything. This is everything. The is batteries everything. are in the, on the, below the bed. Wow, look at this. So this is the generator. Yes, this is the generator. And this is, let's say, the whole system of... Yeah, yeah. Be, below here you have the electromotor. Oh, yeah. The and these are some uh, boxes and belo uh, below the beds are the batteries. Yeah. So what we did together with Jomar, uh, we made a diesel generator. Um, it's not like connected to the shaft. Okay. So it's uh, like fully separate. You can place it anywhere we want, but like, this is the best place. This is also the original uh, engine compartment. Okay. So um, this was the, the, the original diesel. Exactly. So okay. this was, it was very big diesel here, but of course it's 20 years old, um, becoming unreliable. So it has to be replaced at some point. Okay. And then you can consider like spending a bit extra and going to an electric uh, propulsion system. Yeah. So yeah, we have the generator, um, like Beren said, the batteries are in the back. They come together underneath the stairs where we have uh, a main switch 
okay. uh, which you can like disconnect uh, to do maintenance on the whole system safely. Okay, so then you, you completely disconnect the whole power and then exactly. you... Exactly. Okay? Exactly, and from there we go into this box. Okay. This box houses the fuses, um, all the safety stuff, so like that's the first connection we make. And from there we go to the electric motor, to the generator, to everything necessary. So okay. It's a very simple, compact system. But guys, y y you were mentioning this is you created this generator together with Jan Maar. So this is not a standard generator. No. We designed the whole system from scratch, basically. So it was, it's not an off-the-shelf system. Okay. And what we want to focus on as a company, basically, um, is to design uh, a very safe and reliable system. And what we felt when we were in the beginning stages, when we were doing a lot of research, yeah. that uh, generators are that are available standards, um, you wouldn't want to rely on them for a long extended period of time when you are in an emergency in the middle of the ocean. You want yeah. something very good, reliable, for yeah. which you can get the, si the, the, the parts all over the world. Okay. Over, over the world. So that's why we decided, okay, we're going to do something ourselves. We're going to take a Yammer engine yeah. and we're going to design our own electric motor for it, which we like connect and that okay. makes a generator. And um, the big benefit of doing it that way is that we also don't need any uh, converters or inverters or whatever. It's just straight connected to the battery. So it's, it keeps everything simple and reliable. But if I understand it well, then you have, let's say, um, a generator, but it acts like a like an engine. It acts yeah. like an engine. It yeah. acts like, so, so it can run in an emergency situation yes. when you are in the middle of the ocean. So, for example, when we cross the Atlantic Ocean and we, we are facing some problems, then we it, we can run it for days. We can yeah. run it for days. Very reliable, and a very big benefit of having it this way is that because when it runs, it will run for at least an hour to ju just charge the batteries normally. Yeah. That way, it's being it's being loaded, it's okay. being run for a long time, so it gets warm. Yeah. So it's being run very well, so it becomes very reliable and you don't have... Uh, the problem which you have with big diesel engines is when they, they get uh, dirty, yeah. because they normally only you use them for going outside of the harbor, and then you turn it off and it's running at maybe a little bit more than stationary, but yeah. that makes everything very unreliable. So uh, it's 30 kilowatts. We have wow. available for this generator, so that's so small. Yes, yeah, so yeah. small. <laughs> if I compare it to we, we have a nine kilowatt on board our our ship, but it's it's much bigger. Yes. Okay, Baron, but is this generator directly connected to the shaft, or is it? No, it's not uh, directly connected to the shaft. It's uh, separated from the shaft. Okay. Uh, the generator uh, reach can recharge the batteries directly. So if you want to sail electric, um, you can recharge the batteries with a generator, batteries uh, supplying the, of, uh, the... The electric engine. <laughs> yeah, the electric engine. Okay, yeah. cool. And how long do, does the generator have to run to run all the batteries? Well, we have 28 batteries. Uh, 28? Yeah, 39 kilowatts, and we have a 30 kilowatts uh, generator. So in an hour you can uh, recharge it up That's to uh, 30 amazing. kilowatts. That's amazing. So for example, if you're uh, anchoring, you can, uh, at least for 10 days, you can anchoring with 28 batteries. 10 days? 10 days. Running all the stuff yeah. and behind you, anchor and just with one hour of... Yeah, with one hour. And if you want to uh, stay longer at the place, well, one hour and you're fully recharged. Yeah, yeah. But you also have, I think, let's say like a solar system or other ways how to charge the batteries? Yeah, for example, if you're sailing, uh, you can use uh, hydro generation. Okay. So if you go uh, around eight, eight knots, uh, it's around five kilowatts. Okay, so that's, uh, yeah, that's a lot. Yeah, and uh, for example, solar panels or uh, wind gen uh, generator. Yeah, wind gen. So the generator you don't use that much? No, it's only for emergency situations. Uh, for example, for a long uh, day cruising or when you're in anchoring for a long time. Yeah. At least 10 days or more, so. Wow, so it's really, it's, it's like the the, the last backup situation. Yeah, that's what we think. Hybrid sailing for us is not, uh, yeah, using the generator at least, yeah, uh, less as possible. Yeah. And to uh, use the batteries in the electric motor as much as possible. So. so you can say it's kind of a full electric sailing boat with a backup system as a generator. Yeah. Wow. Okay, cool. I want to see the batteries.
let's go. <laughs>
very much. So okay. all the connections, for example, in the batteries, you have all these connections between the batteries um, and they heat up when, when there's current uh, flowing through them. Yeah. And then the system cools down again because you stop the motor and everything. And metal expands and it retracts and it expands. So over time these connections, they become loose. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and that's a very big fire risk. Of course, with 48 volts, you can only go up to that thing 10 kilowatt. And for a ship like this, which is 57 foot and 20, Six tons. 26 tons. Uh, yeah. 10 kilowatts is never enough to, to do anything on it. I mean, you need the power, you need that 70 kilowatts to when you go uh, into the dock to stop it's and to, to stop, accelerate. Of course, and, yeah, yes. yeah. I mean, for cruising, you don't need that much, but for those situations, you do want the power. We with our polyester boat are, are 22 tons. Yes. Empty, so, so you really need it. Yes. And if you think about the difference because I see a lot of now movements of let's say ocean fault or torpedo into but that are more catamarans. They are more lighter versions then? Yeah, so ocean fault they use 48 uh, volts. Okay. Which they put uh, electric motors each of 10 kilowatts. Okay. Behind each other. Yeah. And that way they can make 40 uh, kilowatts in okay. total. It is quite clever that they do it but it adds a lot of components and uh, complexity to the system. So if for some cases it, it works and still 40 kilowatts would not be enough for this ship even still. No, this is really a project because the space inside yeah. this classic boat is really Nothing narrow. Nothing square, everything is round. So it's yeah. really hard to put our system in it. So it's a real integration hell. Yeah. But if you manage this, um, yeah. you can manage more. Yeah. Yes. And this is the sink is going to be on top of this, right? Yes, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> but yes. that's okay? That's yeah. okay because our whole system is IP67, so okay. it's, it's completely waterproof. Like, not, nothing can happen to it. And so if the sink is leaking? Doesn't matter. It doesn't, doesn't matter. matter, no. And also a uh, difference with uh, Torquedo, which also, actually what they do, they can deliver big systems because they also go up to that 350 volts. Okay. Up till now they are using uh, lithium-ion batteries from uh, BMWs. Okay. Which are very good batteries, of course, but yeah, we don't believe in that lithium-ion uh, battery pack on ships. Be because of because the fire, the fire yeah, risk. Because of the safety. And what we as a company also want to focus on is like uh, the flexibility of our system and the customizability. So when uh, s someone comes to us and he or she has a ship, uh, we want to be able to optimize our system that's why we have all these battery modules. Yeah. So we can be very flexible in the placement. Okay, I understand. So you are really system integrators yeah. Yeah. and design a system from scratch for yes. every project. Yes, yes. Yeah, the, the, with the system we have, with the 70 kilowatt system, we can like configure it in many ways. I mean, we could put the generator in the back of the boat as well if you want. It doesn't matter. No. We could put the batteries anywhere we want, so just at the best place. Yeah. For each ship. For each ship. Wonderful. And the best weight combination. Yeah, of course, that's what <laughs> we need. Because we if need you're sailing, <laughs> you want to <laughs> go yeah. fast. Yeah, yeah, and we want all the all the heavy weight in the in the in the center line, right? Yeah. Yeah. So we're very, very flexible with that. Yeah. Yes. Wonderful. Wonderful. I really admire you guys that you are <laughs> that you are doing this project on this this ship and Yes, thank you. And um also when we're talking about the weight, I mean a lot of people I think are interested in like what are the weight savings yeah. on these kind of ships. Yeah. Instead of all the, the gasoline yeah. tanks and exactly. the, the old engine. Exactly. So like we don't have an exact number, but I can say the battery packs together they weigh two hundred and eighty kilos. Yeah. Which is not much Nothing. for twenty eight batteries nope. and thirty nine kilowatt hours of capacity. Then the electric motor weighs about a hundred kilos. Okay. Uh, and then, of course, we got a 30 kilowatt generator. Yeah. But what we take out is like the big diesel engine, which is very heavy, of course. Yeah. And this ship, uh, for instance, has 750 liters of diesel yeah. on board, which this generator will never <laughs> use up. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and was there a previous generator on the boat as well? Yes, yes. that was also there. It was in the back. Yeah. We took that one out as well. Um, so the system becomes simpler and you don't need all that diesel, which like is a lot of weight. Yeah, yeah. So the question is, what what, what are you going to do with the diesel tanks? Yes. Fill and them for water. Yes, and like in the Id ideal situation, when it's a new ship you're designing, you would put the batteries in the place of the diesel tanks. Yeah. But of course, that's not always possible. So for this ship, 
like that's not possible. That's why the batteries are under the beds. Yeah, but that's a good uh, good place. Yes, yeah. and overall, um, like the, the the space we use, we don't use any more space than we did before because normally before the batteries were uh, the 24 volt batteries were under the beds with the chargers and we moved them to the place where the old generator was. Okay. So there's not much more space we're using. We have the, the Super B batteries as well. Mm -hmm. And I informed our insurance because they don't insure uh, lithium batteries. Just yeah. it's, it's, it's not normal. So how do you see it with the complete electric system on, on board? Is that? Yeah, for example, for the batteries, that's a nice thing about Super B is that they are marine certified. Okay. So that's already a nice thing. And about the ball system, we want uh, SOLAS uh, certification. Okay, so, so really the top. Yeah, so the top, so you can uh, go on the blue waters yeah. and the insurance. Uh, they they will support it. it and cover it, yes. Wow, wow. So you are really at all the components going to the top notch level and yeah. certification on, uh, yeah. on that kind Nobody of thing. Nobody should have a problem with it. So. You really want to help the customer and to uh, deliver the best product. Yeah, yeah. wonderful. So, um, this is a classic yacht. How do you charge the batteries beside the generator? Because you want to use it as less as possible. So, are you using hydro generation? Yeah, we use hydro generation because solar panels are not beautiful on this ship. So no. the owner is yes, considering that. But we uh, have uh, hydro generation. It's around five kilowatts an hour. So five kilowatts? Yeah, if you sail eight knots. So uh, you can recharge the batteries uh, really good with this. Wow, okay. So, and another benefit from having the electric motor is that uh, this is a maxi prop. Yeah. And what we were able to do, we were able to put the the blades in a much more aggressive pitch okay. because like the electric motor we use has 800 newton meters of torque <laughs> which is instant instant exactly from from down low so we were able to put a much more aggressive pitch so we have a lot more efficient uh, propulsion i think if you you put it you, it's, yes. it's, it's almost like a full stop i think yeah. it's an uh, electric propulsion you have instant power for example if you use a uh, conventional diesel engine well you have to start up the engine and it takes it takes a while for it to start it up with this it's on standby so if you have yeah sailing in a box or something you have to do a maneuver yeah, yeah you have instant power for it so. yeah. yeah but this is this is this is going to be different maneuvering yes yeah. very much very yeah, much to the next level and indeed. also a nice thing is actually because the electric motor runs at the same speed as the propeller would normally run at yeah you don't need like the gearbox which you normally have behind the diesel even yeah which normally converts it to half the speed i believe so our electric motor runs at 1500 rpms max which is the same for this propeller so it's exactly the same wow So what, what are we going to do? I'm going to inside the boat. There we have a switch, which I turn on. And what that switch does, it charges the whole system, basically. Okay. So we have the batteries, which are 350 volts. Yeah. And you need to slowly charge the uh, electric motor and all the other electronics okay. to the 350 volts. OK, so that takes a while? Yeah, if you, if, yeah it, it takes like six seconds, yeah. uh, we okay. said that. Um, because if you do it instantly, then uh, it goes from zero volts to 350 <laughs> volts. like then you would get an arc or something. Yeah. So it's for safety that we just switched on very slowly. Okay. So we can go inside, do yeah. that now. This is the on-off switch basically. Normally it would be mounted in an easily accessible location, but this for testing purposes, it's, it's still here. <laughs> it's work in progress, right? Yeah, so what this switch does, if I turn it on, it will slowly charge the system. So that's the first relay. Now it's charging. Takes a couple of seconds. That was the second. And this is the third click. Okay. And so now the voltage is like on the system, but yeah, of course I can not touch it anywhere. So <laughs> still no. safe. No. Um, and now the electric motor is able to, to run. Yeah. Okay. Wow. But this is the 350 volts getting in. Yeah, that's yeah. 350 volts getting here. Yeah. So 
this is the pump. Um, normally it would turn out on automatically, of course, but for testing purposes still, we put it on manually. Um, this pump is the loudest part in the whole system, actually, <laughs> right now. Uh, so that's actually quite funny uh, when you remove the big diesel engine, because you lose the noise from the diesel engine, you start hearing all kinds of other things, which would normally already be there, but yeah. you never notice yeah. them. Yeah. So also when you're sailing, you, you can hear the propeller rotating, which is actually quite funny. <laughs> yeah, this pump is doing what? It's uh, actually cooling the electric system here. Okay. So you can see the water running through here. It's cooling the motor controller. It's cooling the electric motor. Um, and on the, on the hull, because it's an aluminum ship, yeah. we put a very small box because the system is of course very efficient. So we don't have a lot of heat, yeah. like a box this size which the water runs through and that, that cools to the, to the sea water okay. via, via, the, via the hull. Yeah. Wow. Okay. And, but we are on the dry now, so can we? Yes, yes we can. Yes, really? We can. Yeah. <laughs> Shall we go? Yeah. Okay. So this is like a normal engine? Yes. With, without preheating? Okay. Yeah. So what you do now, um, you push this button until it beeps and then you push it again. Now you can push it again. Now the motor is running. Yeah. It's it's not rotating yet, but it's on. Okay. <laughs> so now you can just give it a bit of throttle until you hear a beep. And now the propeller is actually rotating. Wow. Um, yeah, so um, the actually funny thing is that because we have an electric motor, the motor can actually run theoretically at one RPM. So like, <laughs> as you see, the propeller of the shaft is, is running very slowly right now. Yeah. You can't hear anything. Wow. But if you, but now the main question for me is if I have to, because this kind of boats, they, they use several uh, diesel engines, right? In their, in their lifespan. So if you want to change a complete system, let, let's say a diesel system into an electric system. Yeah, if yeah. you compare it to a, a diesel system, it isn't too bad for, a, for this ship. It's around 70K for a diesel system without a generator. Okay. And uh, this system, a 70 kilowatt system, you pay around 100K. Okay, so... so but you have much more comfort. You have the big batteries, you have the generator. 70K instead of, or, 100k instead of 70k, yeah, yeah. but with all the extra it's, plus sides, yeah, and yeah. then it's still a good investment. That's what wow. we think. Wow, wow! And the lifespan of this system is much it's longer. Much longer and much more reliable. So you also don't have the maintenance, the the, the yeah. oil. You don't have to change that often. You don't have like all the parts you will eventually need for your normal diesel motor. Yeah. So all the surface parts. I think if you Compare uh, those costs. Yeah, if yeah. you if you yeah. really compare those costs, it's I I, I think you yeah, and the diesel break costs, of course. Yes, <laughs> yes. And wow. it's much more sustainable. That's yeah, because we thing. only we use and we don't use uh, the engine that much. Mm -hmm. But for example, we use two thousand, three thousand euros at least minimum per season. You wouldn't need that now. Wow. <laughs> so this is this is just the initial investment. It's a little bit higher, but in the long run, it's... Yeah, yeah. it's wow. a return of investment. Thank you so much, guys, yes. for showing this. And, uh, yes, no problem. <laughs> yeah, I wish you all the best with the, yes. with the whole project and many boats. And I hope one day we will convert our boat to an electric one as well. Yes, yes. that would be very nice. Yeah. <laughs> we hope so as well. Okay. So that we can do many test runs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because now we don't have the money to buy a boat ourselves. No. <laughs> <laughs> so if we can... Uh, <laughs> so, th so that would be the big dream to, to, to own your own boat and... Yeah. Yes, of course. And up till that time, we hope to do many test runs with a lot of successful and happy customers. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you will. I'm sure you will. You are so... How old are you? So um, <laughs> actually, it's quite funny. We're, we're brothers, of course. Um, yeah. uh, my brother is five years younger than me, but we were born on the same day. So exactly <laughs> five years, but on the 24th of April. Wow. Yeah. So uh, I'm 24, uh, Berend, he's 19. Yeah. <laughs> Amazing. And you are now in the, and that's what I like as an entrepreneur, that you are in the start of your big project and doing yes. this, and you are really in the transition towards the electric. Uh, yes. And of course, uh, because we are young, we 
we still don't have a lot of experience, of course. I mean, you get that with age, but we are very fortunate that we have a lot of people around us who do support us. And like we, we have uh, Collaborate. collaborations with, with like, for with example, Yamar, yeah. Super B, Fetus, like they, they support us. So thank you so much. Thank you so much. Yes. Thank, thank you, you so much. <laughs> this is, this is the future for Benjamin. I just sent, uh, sent him a location and uh, we found each other. Here he is! Ben Schnell! Whoa! <laughs> We became second on the Dutch Championships and we almost won the with same. With this boat. Yeah, with this boat. 